Today we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on October 28, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. The Utah Jazz were ready for change this offseason. Danny Ainge was brought in as CEO of Basketball Operations, Will Hardy was brought in as the new head coach, and, most importantly, the team parted with their two all-stars in C. Rudy Gobbert and G. Donovan Mitchell. Gone were the team leaders in rebounding, scoring and assists. Ainge hired Hardy, a former Celtics assistant coach, to lead this team on the road back to playoff contention. Not so fast, however, as the Jazz 4-1 start suggests that they may not be ready to give up their playoff spot just yet. On Wednesday night, the Jazz bounced back from their first loss of the season at Houston, with a 109-101 victory over the Rockets. Laurie Markkinen had 24 points and 9 rebounds, and Jordan Clarkson scored 20 points and had 6 assists while drilling 5 3-PT field goals. The Jazz shut down the Rockets in the second half of the fourth quarter, allowing just two baskets in that time. The Nuggets were pounded in Utah to start the season, and payback may be in the offering in this one. Jokic looks to be rounding into MVP form over the past few games, while Murray's play continues to improve. The Nuggets' defense against La, admittedly a poor shooting team, is a good sign as is the play of Bruce Brown. Brown and Caldwell Pope quietly are amongst the two best offseason signings in the NBA, both for their ability to score from long range and for their defensive versatility. Even if Porter is unable to go on Friday, I like the Nuggets' ability to utilize their depth to challenge Utah shooters and expose the Jazz' weak middle with Jokic and even slashing drives from Gordon. Utah is better than expected, but Denver is starting to look like a team that can win the West. Lay the points, minus 8.5, and take the Nuggets. The aforementioned Jazz are a pleasant surprise in the Western Conference to open the year. It is hard to envision them keeping this up through the middle grind of the year, but it is nice to see Laurie Markkinen and Jordan Clarkson playing some quality basketball. Denver is averaging 115 points per game to open the year and is leading the NBA in field goal percentage, 50.1. Although the Nuggets will get their own in the paint with ease, I anticipate the Jazz struggling to get their offense going in this game. Dating back to the end of last year, the total number has gone under in 9 of Utah's last 13 games facing Western Conference foes. I do not expect the Jazz to reach their season average of 120 points to open the year, which is way too high, considering they played the Rockets twice and Minnesota, both mediocre defensive clubs. Take the under with confidence. Portland Trail Blazers vs Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets, 1-4, 2-1-2 at TS, beat the Utah Jazz 114-108 as 2.5-point home dogs last Monday to stop their three-game slide. Two days later, the Rockets suffered a 109-101 defeat at Utah, narrowly covering an 8.5-point spread. Houston trailed the Jazz for most of Wednesday's game and shot just 38.3% from the field and 27.5% from beyond the three-point line, 11 for 40. Kevin Porter Jr. had 24 points and 5 assists, while Jalen Green added 17 points and 7 rebounds. At the time of writing, Damian Lillard was considered day-to-day, -day, and there was nothing on the severity of his calf injury. The Trailblazers will probably play it safe with their franchise cornerstone, so this is a nice opportunity for the youthful Rockets to keep it closed down the stretch. Portland has shown signs of improvement on the defensive side of the ball, but the Trailblazers are still far away from an elite level. Three of their four wins in 2022-23 have come by seven or fewer points, and Lillard has been a key part of their offense, so give me the Rockets and points. The Rockets must also improve on defense, as Houston is allowing an average of 117.6 points per game, which is 22nd, and 7.8 points more per game than the Rockets are scoring. 
Houston is allowing opponents to average 48.2%, shooting overall which is 23rd, and the Rockets are allowing 37.7% shooting from three-point territory which is 22nd. Houston is allowing an average of 47.4 rebounds per game, and the Rockets are averaging 48.4 rebounds per game. The king of the boards for Houston is Alperin Sengun, with an average of 10.0 boards per contest. Kevin Porter Jr. is the leader in steals with an average of 1.4, and Jabari Smith Jr. is the leader in swats, with an average of 1.4 blocked shots per game. Portland's defense is holding opponents to an average of 110.4 points per game, which is 10th best in the NBA. Opponents are shooting 47.2% overall and 34.7% from behind the line against Portland, which are 19th and 14th respectively. Portland is allowing an average of only 41.2 rebounds per game, which is 6th in the NBA, and the Trail Blazers average 45.4 rebounds per contest which is 11th. Joseph Nurkic is the leading rebounder for Portland, with an average of 11.6 boards per game. Hart is the leader in steals with an average of 1.6 per contest, and Kean Johnson is the SWAT leader with an average of 1.0 blocked shots. For contest Portland will be without its leading scorer and leader in assists Damian Lillard, and they are also missing two other regulars in the backcourt. The total has finished under in 8 of Portland's last 10 overall, as well as in 11 of the last 15 games that Portland has played head-to-head -head against Houston. Houston has seen the total finish under in 5 of its last 7 games played on the road against the Trail Blazers. Houston has had its share of problems scoring as the Rockets are 21st in the NBA in scoring average and are 28th overall shooting percentage at 41.9%. Take the under 228.5 points. Phoenix Suns vs New Orleans Pelicans The New Orleans Pelicans, 3-1 at TS, returned to winning ways last Tuesday, despite missing both Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. After a heartbreaking 122-121 overtime defeat to the Utah Jazz, the Pels outlasted the Dallas Mavericks 113-111 as 5-point home underdogs. They shot 57.9% from the field and 44.4% from beyond the arc, 12 for 27, and eight players scored points in double digits. Trey Murphy 3 led the way with 22 points and 5 rebounds, while CJ McCollum posted a double-double of 14 points and 11 assists. The Phoenix Suns, 2-2 at TS, started a six-game homestand last Tuesday. They dismantled the Golden State Warriors 134-105 as 1.5-point favorites for their second consecutive Sioux and ATS victory in a row. The Suns held the reigning NBA champions to 39 second-half points while shooting 51.1% from the field and 41.4% from beyond the arc, 12 for 29. Devin Booker went off for 34 points and 7 assists, and DeAndre Ayton added a 16-point, 14-rebound double-double. The injury-depleted Pelicans played well against Dallas at home, and I'm expecting them to slow down in a tough road matchup against the Suns, who have just trounced the reigning NBA champs. Phoenix is one of the best defensive teams in the league and owns plenty of weapons to shut down CJ McCollum, who'll be a key guy for the Pelicans. New Orleans leads the NBA in offensive rebound percentage, 32.7, but the Suns are doing a good job on the defensive glass. I'm looking for the Suns to hold the Pels to one shot and cover the spread at home once more. Phoenix is 8-3 at TS in its last 11 meetings with New Orleans. Take the Phoenix Suns. With the injuries surrounding the top stars of the New Orleans Pelicans, guys like shooting guard CJ McCollum are going to need to take a step up, and he has so far. He is tied for 10th in the NBA in points and tied for 2nd with assists, as in 34.8 minutes of action, he is averaging 21 points, 3.5 rebounds, 7.8 assists, 0.3 blocks, and 1.5 steals per game. McCollum has been iffy with his shot from distance specifically so far as he is shooting 43.6% from the field, 28.6% from beyond the arc, and 88.9% from the charity stripe. In his previous game against the Dallas Mavericks, he finished with 14 points, 11 assists, 1 block, 1 steal, and 3 turnovers. If he can continue to dish the ball out as well as be an efficient scorer, it will really help the injured Pelicans team. 
the Phoenix Suns have been depending on the production of shooting guard Devin Booker, as he is tied for the NBA lead in points, and tied for 7th in the sport with assists, as he is averaging 32.5 points, 3 rebounds, 5.8 assists, 0.3 blocks, and 1.3 steals in 38.8 minutes per game thus far. He has been shooting incredibly well throughout the beginning of the year, as he is shooting 53% from the floor, 48% from the three-point line, and 88.2% from the free-throw line. Booker played 35 minutes against the Golden State Warriors as he finished with 34 points, 2 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals, and 3 turnovers. According to Dunks and Threes, these offenses have been killing it as of late, as New Orleans is second in the NBA, with a 119.2 adjusted offensive rating, while Phoenix is seventh in basketball, with a 114.4 adjusted offensive rating. Ratings are nice, but we are playing basketball with points, and the Pelicans are averaging 122 points through their first four games, while the Suns are scoring 119 points per game in their previous three games. The injuries to Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram should lower this total enough where we should be able to attack the total as it decreases. All in all, go with the over 225.5 points to hit in this game.